Have you ever thought about the extent God goes to in order to save a single soul? Tony Broom Ministries brings you the following message, entitled, Whatever It Takes. We're in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, 32, and 33 today. Do everything to the glory of God. That's a good thought. Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. If that could be our motto in life, that what I do, what I eat, what I drink, where I go, what I say, the activities I'm involved in, do everything to the glory of God, to glorify Him. Do you think about when you eat breakfast or lunch or supper, dinner or supper, we used to call it, everything that you do, I'm doing this not just to help my body, not just to satisfy my hunger, but I'm doing this for the glory of God. We would say things differently if we would say, I'm saying this for the glory of God. Because sometimes the things I say, I don't believe they glorify God like they should. Sometimes I get crossed up in myself, and I certainly know that I say, or at least think things that I shouldn't say or think. And sometimes we do things that we shouldn't do. It's not in our heart. Our heart is after the Lord. We want to run after the things of God. We want to please God in all we do and all we say. We want to glorify God. But we live in the fleshly world. We're still under the curse of sin in this world. And we as believers, we're not under that curse. But we still live in a world that is plagued by so much evil. So many people do not even acknowledge God in their lives. They don't even think about God ever. And yet we as believers are called on to glorify God in everything we do. So it's a direct opposite of the way that the world lives. Do all to the glory of God. Whatever you do, if it's to eat or to drink or to work or to play, to study or to take a nap or to watch television, boy, I tell you what, that would be hard to do for the glory of God, wouldn't it? Watch television because there's so much filth, so much nonsense. Just doesn't mean much of anything that's on there today. Do everything not to offend anyone. Oh boy. Now that's a hard one, isn't it? Do everything not to offend anyone. It's hard not to offend somebody sometime, somewhere. But he said, do everything not to offend anyone. Give none offense, neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. Now there are three groups right there that really make up the population of almost the whole world. Give none offense. If you can live in this world without offending the Jew, the Gentile, or the church of God, you're in pretty good shape. But that's what we are to strive for as believers. Give none offense, neither to the Jews. Well, why shouldn't we offend the Jews? God is not pleased with them. They don't do what's right most of the time. They rejected their Messiah. They didn't listen to the prophets. They went against God. They have done everything to break His heart. They served false gods. They didn't listen to the Word of God. They didn't listen to their leaders. Why should we have something in our mind to make us not to offend them? It's because even though of all the things they've done, they're still the people of God. We're to be for Israel. Not that we like everything they do. But we're to bless them. God didn't like everything they did either. But He said to Abraham, He said, I will bless them who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. So if we don't bless Israel, if we curse Israel, if we're against the Jews, God is against us because we cannot be blessed when we're against those whom God has blessed. He said, I will bless them who bless you. I will curse him who curses you. So do your best, do everything, not to offend. Give none offense, neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles? The Gentiles, anybody who's not a Jew. Gentile, Greek, the New Testament expresses it as Greek. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to the 
everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek or to the Gentile. Those who are in the nations of the world are the Gentiles. Give none offense to the Jews nor to the Gentiles. Why? Because the Gentiles are those whom God is working with right now. God is not working with the nation of Israel as a nation. He deals with them individually now, but He's not working with them as a nation. But He's working with the Gentiles. This is known as the time of the Gentiles that we're living in right now. We call it the church age. We call it the age of grace. But it's the time of the Gentiles. God is building Himself a bride from the Gentile nations of the world. That's why the book of the Revelation talks about from every nation, tribe, kindred, and tongue, those who are saved, and they make up the nations of those who are saved. God is building Himself a church, a bride, from the Gentile people of the world. That's why if we can't offend those because God is using His Word to reach these people for the cause of Christ. Do not offend the Jews, nor the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. Those who are in the church, those who are born again, those who belong to Christ. If we go around offending our brother and our sister all the time, we're not going to be prosperous in the kingdom of God. We're not going to reach out with the gospel like we should because we're like a bunch of chickens in a coop. We're pecking on each other and we're fighting each other and we're against each other. Paul said if you do that long enough, you'll devour each other. You're just going to eat each other up. Well, he said, I don't want you to do that. Do not offend the church of God. Do everything you can to help people so they will be saved. Even as I please all men in all things, not seeking mine own profit, but the profit of many that they might be saved. Paul said, I want to help people. I want to see them prosper. I want to profit them. I'm not trying to get a money game out of this thing. I'm not trying to be in the ministry to make a big name for myself. He said, I please all men in all things. He didn't mean to say that he was a people pleaser all the time. But what he was saying, I please all men in all things. I try to do what I can to reach everybody where they are. If I'm in Rome, I can act like a Roman. If I'm in Judea, I can act like a Jew. And he said, I want to please my Lord. I want to please Him in every place that I can. I want to prosper these people and help these people so that they can be saved. God did and still does everything He can do so we can be saved. You think about God the Father. In eternity past, before anything was even made, before God said, let there be light, before we were thought about, He had already known what we were going to do. Before He made the first man, He knew what we were going to do. If I had been Him, I said, I don't think I'm going to make Him. I'll let Him lay there in the dirt. But He didn't do that. Even though He knew what we were going to do, He still made us anyway. And He allowed us to have a choice. Are you going to eat from the tree? You're not, not going to eat from the tree. We have a choice. And of course, we made the wrong choice. God knew what we were going to do. But He didn't wait till we did what was wrong. He made a plan before anything was ever made. He provided our salvation, our healing, everything that we would ever need. Our needs were already provided before the foundation of the world. You can say it like this. God finished before He even started. He finished everything that He was going to do. In His mind and heart, it was already done. In the mind and heart of God, it was already done. Jesus already went to the cross. Redemption had already been completed. And all He had to do was just carry it out. God's Son came to the world, and He lived, and He died on the cross, and He rose again, and He carried out what was in the plan in the heart and mind of God all throughout eternity past. Jesus came and He did it. So Jesus did what He could do so we could be saved. What else can He do? He gave His life. He gave His blood. He gave everything. And He has nothing else to give. The Holy Spirit, He does everything He can do. He convicts you of sin. When you were out there in the world, raising Cain, raising the devil, He raised Cain until you wasn't even able, you know. You're out there in the world having a good time, thought you were having a good time, living in sin. And the Holy Spirit convicted you of sin before you were even saved. He convicted you of your sin. You don't want to live this way. You don't want to continue being this way. You don't want to die and go to hell. He convicted you of your sin. 
He told you of a Savior who loved you. He brought you to the house of God or to a meeting or wherever it was. He let the gospel come to you. Then when you opened your heart to Christ, the Holy Spirit came into your life. He baptized you into the body of Christ. He does everything that He can do to get mankind to come to Him. So what's the thought? What's the topic? Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. God said, whatever it takes, I'll do whatever I need to do to save them. Jesus said, whatever it takes, I'll do whatever I need to do to save them. In the Garden of Gethsemane that night, He suffered. He suffered agony in His soul. He said, Father, I know all things are possible to You. Take away this cup from Me. Don't let Me drink it. But He said, not My will, but Thy will be done. In other words, whatever it takes. God said, Holy Spirit, you've got to go to the world. It's not going to be comfortable all the time. It's going to be a lot of evil around you. But I've got some people down there that love God. They'll open their heart. They'll allow you to come in and fill them and bless them and give them power. Holy Ghost said, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes to reach people for Christ. And churches now, they're saying whatever it takes. But the problem is, they're going into things they shouldn't go into. God will do everything He can to save you, except He will not go into sin with you. He will not violate His holiness. He will not violate His Word. Jesus never did that. The Holy Spirit never does that. In churches today, we can do everything we can to see people saved. But that doesn't mean that we let down on the standard of holiness. We let down on the standard of righteousness. That doesn't mean we compromise. We should never compromise the place, the foundation, the old songs of Zion, the Word of God, the preaching of the blood and the cross. You can never compromise these things. Yes, whatever it takes to save a sinner, but you can't say, well, we'll just be a social club. We'll be an easy, cheap, easy believism where we won't offend anybody. Yeah, we shouldn't offend anybody, but not that way. Sometimes the Gospel offends people. Sometimes the truth rubs you the wrong way. But whatever it takes, as long as it's in the right way, whatever it takes to save a sinner, that's what God wants to do. Paul said, I want them to be saved. I want them to be profited. I want them to be blessed. And whatever it takes, I want to do whatever I can to see souls saved. Many people now, you think about it, you used to hear people getting saved in church, getting saved in revival meetings. We had four or five people this past Sunday that gave their heart to Christ, made decisions for Christ, a rededication. And that's wonderful. But it should be people getting saved, brothers and sisters, every day. There should be people coming to Christ every day. And it's hard to get people to turn their lives over to Christ. Seems like in the world that we're living in now, it ought to be easier now to get people saved than ever before. Because this is a rougher and this is a world that we've never seen in our lifetime like it is now. It seems like it should be easier to get people to come to Christ. But it's harder as time goes on. It seems like it's harder that you hear fewer and fewer decisions for Christ. It should be the other way around. Whatever it takes to get a man or a woman, a boy or a girl, to make the decision. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. God will continue to do anything and everything He can, to save as many as is possible. But, it is our responsibility to carry out the Great Commission. Whatever it takes, is a Tony Broom Ministries production.